Welcome to the 21 Knives of 2021. This is a never a dull moment, and we guarantee this will not be a dull moment. Laid out before you were 21 Knives. Um, one is not here today, but we have some footage for you. But it's the 21 Knives that were collected over last year. Um, definitely very diverse. We're excited to share them with you. Some of them you have not yet seen. I think there's only one or two that have not had an unboxing. So we will discuss that. And then at some point we will still do an unboxing for you. And uh, we're just excited to have this in the collection. Definitely very diverse and versatile. Okay, so we're going to start with just the elephant in the room. Uh, pretty much everything here is Japanese made except for the Vietnamese made Dao Vua. Okay, so let's just go ahead and take a look at the different knives. From, so the Dao Vua, we have the 165 millimeter um, Nikiri. Okay, we have the 240 millimeter Sujihiki. And then we have the 210 millimeter Gyuto. And we have the 150 millimeter petty knife. Now this company is very unique because it's a Vietnamese blacksmith. They started a tradition of knife making back in 1288, basically a long time ago. This isn't new to them, but it's just been kind of secretive and they have their own process. They use a German mono steel that comes from the leaf springs. And these are the version two. So some of you might've saw the version ones that were originally out there. Um, these are also, they have an ebony and paduk handle. Okay, so just wanted to tell you, um, I have actually not, I did not do like a test of any kind with them. I just started using them. I wanted to use them in the kitchen. And I'll go ahead and give you a quick rundown of my initial thought. On the Sujihiki in particular, um, there, there is a little bit of flex. There's just a little bit of flex, okay? And you get that with a lot of German steel. So there were certain things, I, I remember actually with the chef knife, um, when I was cutting the raw nine pounds of chicken that I was going through, I didn't really have any problems. Once it was cooked, the chicken was cooked, the flexibility kind of slowed me down a little bit. I'm excited in a different video to sharpen them and see how sharp I can get them. But they are beautiful. Um, they, have, they were given to us actually from Tony at Tokushu Knife. He's been a great sponsor of the show. So um, we went ahead and included all four of them as one knife for this particular episode. Um, super excited to continue using them. Very inexpensive. If you're trying to get into some knife ownership, want to practice sharpening, want to mess with the different shapes, you can really do this at a very inexpensive price point. Okay, so now we're gonna start down at the bottom. We're gonna kind of save the big boys for last. Okay, so we have this 180 millimeter petty knife. Okay, so this Sunahitsa. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. Oh, we forgot. It's not here. Oh. I will go ahead and tell you. We're on this one. We're on this one. I'll go ahead and tell you about that. Sorry about that, guys. But we have the. This is the Sunahitsa 80 millimeter petty slash pairing knife. This is the Australian 10V. The Aus 10V. I don't know why I said Australian, but it's Aus 10V steel with the damascus finish um it's a popular stainless steel it is an upgrade from the aus 8 steel similar characteristics to vg10 i will say that this is a very popular pairing knife um my wife and i use pairing knives regularly and one thing to know about that particular size for us is we do deal with a lot of fruit um so coring uh like a strawberry something like that it's something i do it not her um she's into frozen fruit organic um so if i have some fresh stuff i, I i've been going to it um i know you guys know i'm probably a bigger fan of japanese handles i've definitely grown on me with the western handles uh the damascus is a nice touch but it really is an inexpensive again this was a uh this was purchased not given this was a Tony Tokushu knife purchase. It's still on the website. I'll make sure I have links to all of these knives. Um, so love this knife. Uh, so now what I want to do is 
I do want to mention a knife and I'm going to go to the footage. Okay, so right now, since it's not present, so this knife is a skinning knife. And so we're going to cut to the footage because I let a friend borrow it for a really big hunt. There's a charity event for the um, special operations wounded warriors. So, so people who are in the military that were doing special operations, they're wounded. There actually is a big hunt. I asked my friend Brian to actually use the knife in the skinning of an animal. It's a skinning knife. And I don't really know when I'm going to get around to doing it, but I want to get some footage of it in action. But what I have now we're going to cut to is footage of the actual knife. Okay, so the skinning knife itself is a, I always wonder if I can say these right. It is, it's a Sunahisa Kawahagi skinning knife, and it is blue number two. It is hunters and butchers. Um, so if you do have a skinning knife, that if you need one that can retain a wicked edge, obviously if you're dealing with blue number two, you know that you can get an extremely great edge. Um, it is, you know, carbon steel, it is reactive. So you're dealing, when you're skinning, you're dealing with fluids. You're dealing, if you're outdoors, you know, you're dealing with moisture and things in the environment. So this is something to deal with is the corrosion, wiping it down after the usage. But I'm excited that the knife is owned. It's in the collection as far as the trying to get all the different knives out there in the world. But when was I ever going to get around to doing this? I don't know. So it's getting used and we're very grateful. All right. So the next on the list, this is an Ajikiri. Okay. Now I am a big fan of these Ajikiri. So these Ajikiri, some people call them like a wide petty. Uh, Sunahitsa Jinsan Ajikiri, 120 millimeter. And the Jinsan steel, it is a stainless. It's called Silver 3. Um, it is a stainless steel and it, it has its benefits. It, you know, it sharpens like a blue. Um, this is an inexpensive knife. You people might want to use the term code Deba, but it is a double beveled knife. So it is not single bevel like a Deba. Achikiri is like, it's also kind of a boat knife. Um, I know you were used to saying that with like the Funayuki, but this is more like in your pocket day to day for cutting rope and things like that. Um, so it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a utility knife. Everything. So it's an interesting pattern. Um, this was gotten to us through real sharp knife. We appreciate Dustin and uh, this collection is it's a, it's something you can afford to get into. And again, trying to have different shapes, super excited about that. Okay. So, crazy excited about this next knife. We just did the unboxing of this the other day. You've seen it in a video. I'll put a link. Petty set go. Just wow. So this is the Kobayashi. Okay. You had heard that Kobayashi was a laser. Well, we know the truth. It is. Um, yeah. This SG2 Super Gold 2 knife by Kobayashi. Kobayashi is a young blacksmith that was a sharpener for other blacksmiths. He decided he was going to do his own knife. It definitely has the, the feel of um, a Shibata. Uh, it's got this kind of unique red lacquered handle that they're known from for. It's a little bit bigger than your average handle. Um, this got an 88 and a 94 out of the box. Um, the sound or lack of sound when cutting paper was just ridiculous. A laser. I mean, we've heard it was a laser. It is a laser. I would say that I would love to get into like a 210 millimeter chef knife by this guy. It would just be oh, ridiculous. So if you haven't seen the unboxing, check out the unboxing. Do yourself some justice. Yes. Okay. So we're going to go over to a very small Santoku. So this is the 150 millimeter um, Santoku. So this is Fukamizu, blue number two. I love blue steel, you know. This company's been around for a minute from 1915. Uh, it's Japan, Kagoshima, um, walnut handle, plastic ferrule, inexpensive knife. For me, getting this particular knife was that effort to um, get all the different shapes at different sizes. So how many people actually make a 150 millimeter Santoku? 
a uh, little note with this knife that has not had an unboxing nor has it been used. I literally do not know how sharp this knife is. We know that blue number two should be able to get extremely sharp. Um, in, in our very busy schedule of doing unboxings, I really try to spend a little more time on some of the higher end. Um, not that it doesn't deserve its own unboxing. Maybe when we have time, we'll do it for like a Tuesday night just to see how sharp that they got it. I mean, inexpensive knife. This is um, from Chef's Edge. Uh, just a, a really great vine, not a lot of money. Uh, looks kind of like a Funayuki, definitely a great utility. Okay, so this is a shape you guys might have seen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have something unique in, you know, we're trying to get all those different shapes. So this is 160 millimeter. It is not a Santoku, it is not a Bunka, it is a Kingata. Okay, so Kingata, Santoku, Bunka knife. It is by Sakai Takayuki. It is a 33 layered VG10 Damascus that has the hammered Tachimi marks in it. So again, VG10, um, really good. You guys are used to VG10 and like Shun. Um, a lot of you will complain about like possible chipping. Sakai Takayuki has been around for a long time as a company. It's not a blacksmith. Um, they really do a lot of work. This knife has been uh, heat treated to like a 60 to a 61. So it's not like extremely hard. Um, definitely you could feel like it's a workhorse. It has that stainless quality. So you don't really have to worry about oxidation. It's a great size introductory for anyone, you know, whether it's your child, whether it's your wife, you can use it all the time. And, and I've gotten VG10 extremely sharp and everything. So um, it's just something you can grab. Okay. So this next knife, I did not do an unboxing because my friend Frankie did an unboxing. Okay, so this Shindo. This is a blue number two, 165 millimeter Funayuki. Now, Shindo, Shindo-san, like, they are known for lasers. I mean, so I have not used this knife at all. Again, you can watch a full review on the knife on my friend's YouTube channel. I will put a link in there so you guys can find it. Um, when you watch his video, his actually has a custom handle. These were get, um, brought to us through um, Tony at Tokushu Knife. Again, great value. If you want a laser, you want to do, you know, carbon steel, blue number two. I love blue steels. I love super blue the best. But if you want to do it, um, then uh, I'm just telling you, this Santoku shape is very sharp, very pointy. And, uh, yeah, I mean... It's just hard not to pick one up. That's all I got to say. All right, so now we have the HAP40. And this was one of my first um, of the, like, the Super Steels, really, um, the, the really harder ones. So the Konjo 165 millimeter, um, this is a, like I said, the HAP40. We recently uploaded a video sharpening this. Um, this can get as hard as like a Rockwell of 65. So let me go ahead and move this up so you guys can check this out. Beautiful handle. Um, not an expensive knife, actually, so it's a great find. Um, so Kanjo, if I can say his last name, Sukahara of Seki City, you know, this family jumped on the Hat 40 bandwagon. This is 20% more carbon than VG10, okay? So it's got great edge retention. Uh, definitely just a fun knife, lightweight, beautiful to look at. This was uh, Chef's Edge had gotten it. So uh, if you check them out, I mean, you want to get into some of the super steels that are going to have a little better edge retention, definitely jump on that bandwagon. Um, and if you want to learn more about that, just take a look at the unboxing. I'll put links above and, and just check that out. The next knife of the 21 knives of 2021, it has become the knife that I said, if I could buy everyone in the world a knife, it'd be the one that I buy. It is the Takamura um, Santoku. I am not normally a Santoku person. Okay, so this Takamura Santoku, this classic red handle, this uh, R2 steel, the Takamura family, I mean, they've been doing this for SG2 for 60 years. This is a hardness of 63. 
really like a laser grind on it. Let me go ahead and pick this up real quick just to go over the spine. You can just see that it's really thin. Um, so this is three generations. This is post-World War II. Again, if, if I could buy a knife for everyone that you could just have great edge retention, easy to sharpen, works am amazing, uh, food release. Um, it's just the one. I mean, obviously they make them in a 210 millimeter and so on and so forth, but uh, it's just the knife that keeps on giving. They also make it in a, a Chromax, which is another one. They really do specialize in like the powdered steels. So Takamura, way up on the list, glad to own one, just way up the food chain. Okay, so this is an interesting knife. This is a 180 millimeter Petty, which you'll kind of think it's like a Sujihiki, and I've used it as such. Um, this particular, like, a Tetsu Shiragami Petty knife. So, you know, there, this is Kajiwara. Um... The blade is like for Shiragami 1, not expensive. I got this from Ryan um, Swanson at District Cutlery. I don't really see you coring uh, strawberries with it. It's a, it's a little bit bigger for that than that function. I mean, definitely your mushrooms and your garlic and things like that I see you doing. Um, so it's definitely been fun to play around with. This is a walnut octagonal handle. Um so i've definitely used this i'm interested in sharpening it anytime i see like shiragami one i just want to like see how sharp i get it because it's supposed to be the thing you can get the sharpest so one day i'm gonna sharpen them all that i have and see if it's like a blacksmith thing like a heat treat thing but um definitely an interesting find at 180 millimeter for a petty okay so we did a movie called the life of a knife and it was an awesome result it was a great experiment so this knife, let's go and get you a close-up of this. So this knife here is the Yukashin SKD Tashimi Santoku. It's 180 millimeter. Um, so it's a semi-stainless. It can react. It just reacts slower. It's somewhere between a, like in the CG and Kuriichi finish. Uh, their Tashimi finish is unique unto them. This knife came in like with an incredible score. I mean, it was right at 200, especially with it being that like, uh, I mean, I remember, I think it was like 218. And, and I think 218 was a number where I figured out like that's still an amazing score. But what was awesome is we did an experiment to show that if you use that knife for three months, everyone in the family, it was like they had to use that knife. Everyone used it. And we were able to put it after three months on a ceramic honing rod and it came right back to life so quick. That is a workhorse. That is something that everyone can pick up and not really worry about the oxidation. So again, um, if you're that Santoku fan, it's a great shape. It's not too long. Uh, children, women, even men, like it just seems to fit everyone. Okay, so the next knife was gifted to us. It is a Fuku knife. So it was made, this is a super blue 180 millimeter knife. Brent Loving sent it to us. He sent us a couple, one of which we actually ended up gifting to someone, a chef in need who had all his knives stolen. Brent was great. Brent is uh, kind of reworking his company right now. If you remember, we did a video where we did patinas. And so this knife, if you take a look at it and see if I can get it close enough for the wife here, I'm going to move it around. This has a coffee patina on it. So we forced the patina on it. But again, um, sharpened really great. It's kind of not that tall for a Guto. Um, so it has some versatility. Again, like I think 180 millimeter is where you're starting to get into the Guto size and it's just like what you're comfortable with. We will redistribute these knives shortly. We're trying to get these uh, close-ups for you. Okay, so now we're going to the hardest, right? We're going to the hardest on the Rockwell. So this is the ZDP 189. Let me go and get this moving for you guys so you can check out this beautiful handle. Okay, so this ZDP 189 Silver Bunka, it's 190 millimeter. 
the Yoshida Hamon family, I mean, they jumped on it. Like as soon as like the ZDP 189 got out there, that became their that became their thing. This knife was purchased handleless. <laughs> we had Josh at Let's Handle This make a handle for it. I actually experimented in making my own handle. I've got a video coming out where I will show you me making a handle for this knife. Unfortunately, after I made a gorgeous handle for this knife, I got a little picky and put it on the sander and then just ruined my handle. So I'm glad that I have a better handle than mine. I think mine actually turned out pretty good. So I'm excited to bring that video to you. This knife scored a uh, sub 100, if I remember right. I mean, okay, so... So this knife is a Rockwell hardness of 67. So it's going to keep its edge for a long time. It's going to be a little bit more difficult to sharpen it. Even though there's some ceramic stones that people say you can use, there's a lot of time invested. Typically, you're going to go a CBN and diamond. And if you don't know what that is, again, we'll put a link to that video. It's a little specialized equipment to get this taken care of. But this is going to be a knife that my wife can add to her list of things she wants to use because... With the ZDP 189, she's not going to really have to worry about oxidation. It's going to stay sharp for a long time. And um, so she'll be able to use it. It's a little bit bigger for her at the 190 millimeter. <laughs> All right. So now we're getting into some of the names that you know, some of the big dogs and beauty. So this is a 195 millimeter Fujiwara Dinka. If you know anything about the Dinka, this particular line is the top line this is the super blue by fujiwara this particular metal is everything is constructed in-house they have other lines that they will send out for pre-lamination but this is laminated in-house it is ground it is sharpened um, mine's got a little polishing issue because uh, i was working on some polishing and just never finished it um, it has a custom handle that handle that's on that did not come with that um, so that is, again, another one from Josh at Let's Handle This. Um, Fujiwara Company, they invented the cladding process of actually putting softer protective metal outside of the core steel. Uh, they're known for their sharpness. They're also known for their hardness. So this Super Blue is one of the only Super Blue you ever see heated to a Rockwell hardness of 65. Um, and, it's, and it feels that rigid. A chipping could be an issue, so definitely be careful when they're that rigid. Okay, so a knife that was gifted to us by Ryan Swanson. This knife is going to be given out to you. This 110 millimeter Karitsu K. It's 110. I mean, I'm sorry, it's 210. 200. There's a two in front. This 210 millimeter Western handle. I think it's a red pack of wood. <coughs> Oh, excuse me this um let's go and get this up close for you guys so the wife can check it out okay so this is a sunahitsa western handle as super blue karitsuke um so this is out of sakai and it's you know it's also just sharpened by ryan swanson i have not cut anything with it since the day he sharpened it so i'm excited after this video to come back and show you guys what he did. I don't know how it normally comes out of the box. Um, this this knife actually has not only the pocket wood, but it has a full tang. So my wife will just show you. Oh, I meant to look at the Yep, so, so it goes completely through the handle. Or a lot of the other guys, knives. It's focusing on the box, there we go. Okay, so a lot of the other knives would have the partial tang inside the Japanese wah handles. So this one actually has the full tang all the way down. And uh, so definitely I'm excited to show you guys like how sharp because Ryan Swanson is awesome. So this is going to be a giveaway knife to kind of raise uh, subscribership and following to District Cutlery on Instagram as well as uh, Never a Dull Moment official on Instagram. And we will, after we air this video, we will get to that. We want to thank Ryan Swanson for his contribution. Um, okay, so a very beautiful night. This is the Hatsukokoru. This is a 210 millimeter Kuritsuke. This knife is like everything. It is super blue. It is Tashimi. It is Kurichi. It is Damascus. It is this snake wood handle. And you can probably tell it is highly reactive. 
Okay, so this 210 millimeter super blue K tip with everything, right? I mean, every single bell and whistle on it. But I will tell you that the oxidation really does get up into the cladding. It is something that you have to clean it immediately. Uh, I have never not had to work a little diligently after using it to get the oxidation off. If I cut an onion, I might use the onion itself to kind of get some acid on it and wipe it clean. A lemon, lemon peel. Um, so it, they are, it is just beautiful to look at. It just makes me kind of not want to use it because of the oxidation. What do you do? It's part of the part of carbon knife ownership. I uh, was super excited to get it. Uh, a little bit less excited to use it. Um, and there was a lot of mystery behind like who is the blacksmith that does this for Hasukokoro. Um, someone messaged me privately and showed me one of the Tajiro higher end lines just to let me know that they're pretty sure it's a certain female blacksmith for Tajiro that's doing these massive, like these intricate, fancy designs. So congratulations to her on the art. Congratulations, they make a beautiful knife. Glad to have it in the collection. Of all the knives you've seen, the next one I think is truly unique. Um, I actually wanted this because my wife is a fan of green, certain green, she is redhead. Uh, it captured me to see the green. So this Makusta green, I'm going to hold it for you. I just have to. This has never been used by me ever. This R2 steel, the finish, the satin kind of a finish. I don't even know what to tell you. I mean, it's just so beautiful to think about using it. Um, so... This SPG2, which is really an SG2R2 heated to a 63 Rockwell. This is a 230 millimeter. It's an odd size. And if you know me, you know I like odd sizes. It's a family-owned business out of Seki City. Um, this particular Revolution, let me think, is it? Rev yeah, it's the Revolution line. It's their luxury line. It's only, it's only now, after I've shown it to you, that I feel comfortable using it i have not done an unboxing so you will see this video before the unboxing i'll be fan it'll be fantastic to do it for you it'll be fantastic to use it it's an r2 steel green my wife might be all about that it's a little long for her at 230 millimeter but um i'm sure she like myself we get you can get used to a bigger knife but again the i, she, I had her in mind when i thought about the green the handle does come in other like exotic colors, red and so on. But it, uh, this was also gotten from Ryan Swanson at District Cutlery. They just, and you know what? I'm going to take a second too to show you something. The, the box, the, here's the, de the details of the box, the details inside the box. Um, just some of the, just some of the paperwork, the sleeve, the paperwork sleeve. There was a tip protector. Um, this was in there to kind of protect it. The foam. There's just an extra. There's an extra level. Again, there's Ryan Swanson's info for those of you who don't know. Okay. There was just an extra level of things done by this company. So if you haven't looked into them, that's all I can say is just again next level. Okay, so a knife that I've been having like a lot of fun with. This is the 207, this is the 270 millimeter um, Kikuichi Fugubiki. Some people say Fuguhiki. This knife was, is like a Yanagiba or Yanagiba, depending on how you say it. Um, you'll see it has some polishing issues because I'm trying to teach myself to polish and I have some low and high spots. So, Tara at Perfect Edge Cutlery, Tara Ransford really has become a friend of our company and helped us launch. So she set us up with this. Uh, this knife is just incredible. But whether you want to call it a long petty, the Fugubiki, a light Yanagiba, Yanagiba, you know, however you're pronouncing it. Um, a white number two, easy to sharpen. It's just everything. Uh, I'm excited 
to sacrifice this nice on, on the altar, so to speak, that I will be practicing my polishing on natural stones with this knife. So look for that in the future. I'm going to be doing clips of me polishing and going through the process. Um, I, I, it's hard to say, like, so we're getting ready to go over to the big boy. It's a very lightweight knife. It's kind of a joy to hold something that that's light because now we're going to finish with a Rolls Royce. Okay. Kurosaki, he went outside of himself and I'm going to bring this to my wife over here so she can get a close up. Okay, so the Kurosaki uh, 300 millimeter Yanagiba with this exotic, I'm going to say ebony handle. I don't think that I ever knew the actual handle. You can see a little bit of a patina issue here that I'm going to have to polish. This is blue number two. Um, I'm going to let her turn it to show you the thickness of the spine. It's a high polished, heavy, beautiful, just beast of a knife. Um, I know he's been doing some of these lately. It is not something that he, I think when I got this, like it was something that was a very rarity. Um, I'm very glad to be the owner of this knife. Um, I, I'm not the sushi maker per se to be a person to own this knife. Uh, it probably would do better in the hands of someone professionally. Uh, Kurosaki, just being that young blacksmith, that up and coming guy with ideas. I've always been a fan, as been some of the other knives that I own, especially in the 20 knives of 2020. If you hadn't seen that, you'll see some other stuff. The Chinese cleaver that I own, the 175 millimeter AS Bunko with, that I've sliced blueberries with. Um, you have been privy tonight to the second part of the collection. The 21 Knives of 2021. Um, we tried to expand on what you saw in the 20 Knives of 2020. The collection has grown and my wife, brought, you know, she's heard recently and isn't happy about the fact that pretty much the 22 Knives of 2022 have been found. Um, I, we probably will not wait till next year all the way to February to share that with you. We'll probably share it with you at the beginning of the, the end of this year because we are going to be doing a, a final video showing like the entire collection. Uh, and after that point, if you've seen some of the knives that you enjoy, a lot of this collection after the collection has been kind of done and we've gotten all the knife shapes to show you, a lot of these will be for sale. The purpose of the sale for the show is that we will be able to use that money to buy other knives, especially specialty knives, to share them with you so that you can hold them, see them before you make a purchase, get, or get uh, a reaction. That is the goal for you to see the fit and finish, to hear things like the oxidation about a knife that looks so beautiful, but man, it's I've got a couple of these that they look so good and then you got them and they just seem like such a burden. Then there's been certain knives we talked about that are just an absolute joy that I would recommend over the top, especially if you remember earlier the Kobayashi just. So thank you for coming into our home. Thank you for coming into Never Dull Moment Kitchen Stadium. As always, it's a joy to bring this type of stuff to you. We're doing the best we can. We come to you Friday night, so we thank you for your support. As always, God bless. Hopefully all of this was not a dull moment. Thank you for joining us. Good night.